Hello, welcome to the QCAA 2023 Specialist Maths Multiple Choice Questions Explained. Today you're going to need a formula book and when I get to paper 2 you're going to need a calculator. Alright, let's dive in. Position of a particle is given by R etc. Um, hopefully you know that this section here is X and this section here is Y. So if we rearrange this first one to make it in terms of T, so we minus 2 from both sides. Now we sub this into the, this equation. So sub 1 into 2, you get Y equals so if you expand the brackets, you have x times x, the answer for question 1 of C. Alright, let's move on to question 2. Consider the following proof. You know, a pretty simple proof. It wants us to look at the assumption within the proof. Proof by induction has three steps, and so the assumption is the second step. So you're letting n equal k. So wherever we see an n, you substitute k in. You don't replace r with k, so a and b are incorrect. And then all of these n's become k's. So the answer is c for question 2. Alright, let's find out what question 3 is. Oh, we've got z's. One solution is z equals negative 2. Which equation could be used to determine the remaining solutions? Alright, so if z equals negative 2 is a solution, that means z plus 2 is a factor. So there's some quadratic, we don't know what it is, multiplied by z plus 2. Now, if we expand the brackets, so we, we can look at certain sections of this. This section at the end is the constant. So if you look at the original, the original constant is negative 2. So negative 2 equals 2q, therefore q equals negative 1. So it could be A or C, and now we need to find what P is. So let's have a look, something that has a P in it. So this part here equals, if you look at the original cubic, negative Z squared. So we're just looking at sections of the original, just looking at the Z squareds in each. That means 2 plus P equals negative 1. If we divide everything by z squared, so you're left with p equals negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. So the answer is A. Alright, question 4, a Leslie matrix question. We've got some animals, we've got a table, so we've got the female population, the breeding rate, and the survival rate. So the female population isn't part of the actual Leslie matrix. It's in the initial population matrix, which is just a vector matrix. So we've got the survival rate and the breeding rate. So the breeding rate is in the top row of the Le Leslie matrix, and the survival rate is in a diagonal. So the first one isn't correct because it's got the female population at the top. The second one isn't correct because it's got one, two, three, four, not sure what that's about. This one isn't correct because it's got the survival rate in the top row. This one is correct. So 4D is correct. It has the breeding rate at the top and the survival rate as a diagonal. So D is correct. All right, question five. We've got, oh, it looks like a stats question. Confidence interval for a parameter. So if you look at your formula sheet, You've got your confidence interval for mu. Now hopefully you know mu, this little symbol here, is the 
population mean? X bar is the sample mean. If we look at the confidence interval, the sample mean is always in the confidence interval. We are unsure if the population mean is also in the confidence interval. So the answer is A. The sample estimate of the parameter always lies. All right, question six. We've got, um, looks like shaded regions of complex numbers graphed on the Argan diagram. Looks pretty cool pictures actually. Uh, this equation describing basically the shaded region. And so we've got x plus two minus i. So that the number inside this absolute tells us the middle of the circle. And we do the opposite sign. So the middle of the circle is minus two in the real direction, plus one in the imaginary direction. Minus two, plus one. So it's either A or B. And that's where they probably stumped a few people. Now, why is it a circle? Because of the absolute signs. So this is less than or equal to five. Um, it's also intersection of real less than one. So the reals less than one is this area here. So the answer is 6b. The differential equation for which the solution is a logistics equation of the form this, where a and c are constants. All right, so hopefully you know your logistics equations. These are the different types of equations you looked at when you're looking at population or mass defect, things like that, where there's a change in something over time. So you can see the bottom one is the logistics equation. That's what makes it unique. And so the logistics equation has the variable at the top of the differential in the equation twice. So if we look at uh, what we've got being given, only 7D has Y twice. So the answer has to be 7D. The logistics equation has the top parameter twice. That's what makes it um, the solution to the logistics equation. Okay, question eight. Point A is the center of a sphere. So we've got a sphere question. So there's two ways you could do this. The first way you could sub in the B value into each equation. So let's substitute point B into A. So X squared minus, minus two times one plus negative 3 squared plus negative 5 squared plus 2 times negative 5 equals 1 minus 2 1 minus 2 plus 9 plus 25 minus 10 and this equals 23. So A has to be correct then. If Substituting in B, we get 23, then A must be correct. 9R, this looks like intersection of planes, probably something to do with three cases or solutions. The geometric interpretation of certain system of three equations with no solution is shown. So all three planes are not intersecting at the same point. Given two of the equations are this, the third equation could be, so if we look at the different types of solutions for three planes intersecting, this solution, which is no solution, has to end up with this sort of matrix that has all zeros at the bottom and a constant. So I think our, to solve this, you have to put these into a matrix and then try and uh, get to this matrix. If it has one at the bottom, it's a unique solution. Constant at the bottom, no solutions. All zeros at the bottom, infinite solutions. So let's try and do this. So the first equation, the coefficients are one, one, negative one, 0 0.5. 
then the second equation is 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0 0.5. And so if we use the equation from A, um, this is a multiple of this. So if we use Gaussian elimination, we'll end up with all zeros on the bottom, and that would be infinite solutions. The same thing with equation B. If we substitute in equation B into the matrix and use Gaussian elimination, equation 1 would eliminate B, so we'd have all zeros. So A and B are both infinite solutions. If we use C, we are going to end up, and using Gaussian elimination, we're going to end up with some constant, it'll be some 1 and a constant. And so that will be a unique solution. But if we use D, because these three are 2 times this, but 3 in D is not 2 times that, if we use Gaussian elimination, we're going to end up with 0, 0, 0 and a constant here. So that would give us zero solutions. So question nine has to be D. All right, question 10. A random variable is drawn from the population. So we've got a number of samples, size 10. The sample means X bar were recorded. The histogram that most likely represents the distribution of the sample means is, if you take sample sizes greater than 30, um, it tends to become a normal distribution curve. It's just something that happens in nature. Because it's only a sample size of 10, it's going to be similar to the population. So we're looking for a graph that's similar to the population. The most similar is B. All right, that's the end of paper one. Paper two, hopefully you've got your calculator ready. The first one, we've got an acceleration of an object moving with simple harmonic motion. A equals negative 2.95 X, where X is the displacement from the origin, determine the period of the motion in seconds. So if we go to our formula sheet, um, simple harmonic motion is what you should be looking for. You've got this thing here, which is acceleration equals negative omega squared X and T is the period of motion in seconds. So we have to figure out um, omega, which is angular velocity, and then do 2 pi divided by omega. So basically taking 2.95, square rooting it to get omega, square root 2.95, so that's our omega, and then 2 pi divided by that, that's our period. Question one, the answer is D, 3.66. All right, question two, the standard deviation for the scores of 1,000 students is 13. Determine the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample mean scores. So let's go back to our formula sheet, our best friend. We're doing statistics and we're looking at um, calculating the standard deviation. So it's given us a standard deviation of the population, which is sigma, which is 13, square root sample number, which is 40, and that gives us our sample standard deviation for the 40 scores which is 2B is the correct answer. So if you did, um, you might have done 13 divided by square root of 1000, and that would have given you C, but that wouldn't have given you the sample standard deviation because the sample is 40 people. Question three, given that 2I is a root of this, determine the values of P and Q. So root means um, solution. So we're just going to substitute in 2i negative 4 and negative 4 into this equation, see if it equals 0. 2i, get i here. So 
So that doesn't equal zero. So let's try the next one. That doesn't equal zero. Let's try the next one. That equals zero. Let's just double check the last one. So the answer is C for question three. Question four. The position of a particle can be modeled by the following. Which curve best represents the path of the particle? We've got parameters. Um, so we've got vectors in the parametric form. And so cos squared plus sine squared equals one. Um, because we have a two here, it's gonna put the y two in that direction. And there's one there, so it's one in that direction. So the answer is 4D. Question five, a plane contains the origin and the points. 1, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 1. A vector normal to the plane is points on a plane. We need to find the normal vector. So how do we find the normal vector? Well, we have to do the cross product. So if we type these into our calculator, And so you get negative 4, 8, negative 4 is a vector normal to the plane. So it's um, perpendicular to both A and B. Ah, so we got a cross product. But what we can do is we can multiply this by negative 1 to go in the opposite direction. And that will give us a, a vector normal to the plane which is 5a is the solution. All right, question six. Two coplanar forces of magnitude 12 newtons and 10 newtons act on an object in the direction shown. Two forces acting on the same plane. Determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the object. All right, so you have to know your vectors here pretty well. So vectors you can move around. So let's say it starts with the 10 Newton vector and then it did the 12 Newton vector. So you're allowed to move vectors around on a plane. So we're going to get this resultant here. So it wants to know what's the magnitude of this. Now you need to know um, your trig this is 22 degrees. So this line here is parallel to this line here. So that makes these two angles both 22 degrees. And this angle here is 90 degrees. So the total angle in here is 22 plus 90, which is 112 degrees. Now we can use this rule Pythagoras minus 2ab cos c. Don't forget to put your answer in degrees. Easy mistake. So the answer to question 6 is D. All right, question 7. Matrix N represents the results of a competition. So competitions, we've got dominance matrices. Um, it's got a ranking model n plus 0.5 n squared to figure out who's first, second, and third. All right, so we have to type this into our calculator. And then we have to do n plus 0.5 n squared. So if you look at how much each row adds up to, P adds up to 3.5, then the bottom row, S, adds up to 3, so that's second, so it goes P, then S, and then the second row, Q, adds up to 2, which is placed third. So it goes P, S, Q, which is A for question 7. All right, question 8. All right, so we have some 
um, invest trig functions. Um, so if tan negative 1 is that, determine f dash 3. So go into our formula sheet because we've got calculus involved. So the derivative of tan, so if the function is tan negative 1, 2x, therefore a is equal to 1 over 2. So our answer is a half over a half squared plus x squared. That's the derivative there. So we've got to type that into the calculator and substitute 3 for x. So the answer to question 8 is A, 0.05. All right, let's have a go at question 9. The time in minutes between the arrival of customers at a certain shop looks like a probability density function. Okay, so we have to figure out the probability that the next customer arrives within 30 to 60 seconds. Okay, so some things to note. X is in minutes, and the question's asking probability within 30 to 60 seconds. So we need to do the integral between 30 to 60 seconds, or 0 0.5 minutes to 1 minute. So the shortcut for integral is shift plus, type in your parameters. Oh, and yes, of course, it doesn't know what E is. So there we go. So the answer is B, 5%. All right, our last question in the video and on the multiple choice tech active. The Argan diagram question. This looks exciting. So we've got Z to the power of 4. So De Moivre's theorem is helpful here. So if you take the quad root of both sides, that, and then we've got this is 2 pi over 3. So if we divide by 4, that'll be our first solution, pi over 6, and then we're going to go round the circle until we get the answer. So it's not these two because their radiuses are 4, so it has to be 10c. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. All the best with your exam um, this week if you're sitting your exams. Um, and yeah, feel free to check out my other solution videos. I hope um, it's been helpful.